In this video, I'm going to provide a simple example as well as systematic approach for forecasting balance sheet. Before we go any further, we must have answer to at least the following questions. The first question is, what do we want to achieve? Being clear about the objective of financial forecasting is very important. And for this example, we want to find out how much we need to borrow next year. So the next question is, what time span is being considered? Since this is a new company, we don't, we don't have historical data and we just have the current year balance sheet and we want to find out the values for the next year. So the next question is, what variables are being forecasted? If you look at detail balance sheet, there are a lot of variables, but for this example, I have chosen selected and most important variables, and we want to focus on common items found in balance sheet, such as account receivables, inventory, property plant and equipment, short-term loan, accounts payable, etc. So the next question is what level of accuracy do we want? The more accurate result we want, we need more money, we need more time. So for this example, we want to make our result as accurate as possible given the information and assumption. The next question we all should be asking before making any projection is what data are available and what kind of model is going to be used. As I said, this is a new company. We just have one year of data and we want to use percent of sales method. The last question is what variables that have circular relationship are being changed? So in this specific example, we want to use short-term borrowing or the bank loan as a is one of the circular variable which means if you change the short-term borrowing it not only impacts item on the balance sheet but also impacts item on the income statement and cash flow statement next big items required for projecting balance sheet are the assumption that we make regarding projection. So let's talk about the key assumption that we want to make for this example. The assumption is sales will grow by 25%. The next assumption is that cash is kept constant. And next is account receivable as a percent of sales will remain constant. Another assumption we are making for this example is inventory as a percent of sales will remain the same. Next is property, plant, and equipment is expected to grow by 5%. This item is slightly different from other items because property, plant, and equipment does not grow or change proportionately with sales. So it must be changed as needed. So for this example, we are assuming that property, plant, and equipment is expected to grow by 5%. So next is current portion of the long-term debt will remain same. Another assumption is bank loan is used as an item to balance the balance sheet. Another assumption is accounts payable as a percent of sales will decline by 5% from current value of 10%. And another assumption is accruals will remain constant and long-term debt is reduced by repayment amount. Similarly, contributor capital will remain constant. And finally, the assumption we make is retained earning increases by net income because no dividend is paid. Next, I'm going to provide a numerical example. Here, I have balance it. All the figures are in thousands. The first column, column A, has items name. The second column B has the value for current year. Column C has all the assumptions that we have made. And column D, E, and F are the column we need. 
and we want to compute next year value using current year's value. There are two types of items in the balance sheet. One, the items that change automatically with sales such as account receivables, inventory and accounts payables. And the second kind of items are the items that do not change automatically with sales such as debt contributed capital. Based on the type of item, we make assumptions for projection. As I mentioned earlier, column B has the current year's value. Column C has all the assumptions that we have made. Now we are going to express items that change with sales as a percent of sales because many items on balance sheet are projected using percent of sales ratio. Let's start with cash. Cash is assumed to be constant, therefore we don't have to compute percent. As far as the account receivables and inventory are concerned, these are assumed to change in proportion with sales. Therefore, we need to compute what is the current year's account receivable as a percent of sales and what is the current year's inventory as a percent of sales because we need them to compute for next year's value. So in order to compute the current year percent, we divide current year's account receivables by sales. Similarly, in order to compute current year's inventory as a percent of sales, we divide current year's inventory by current year sales, right? All right, so we computed the ratios for account receivables and inventory. As far as prepaid expenses concerned, it is assumed to be constant, so we don't have to compute the percent. Next item is property, plant, and equipment. It is expected to grow at 5%, so I'm going to write this as a 5%. And next item is current portion of long-term debt. It is assumed to be constant. It doesn't change with the sales, so we don't have to compute percent here. Bank loan. It is used as a plot, meaning this item is used to balance the balance sheet, so we don't need the percent. Now, accounts payable, and we assume accounts payable will change, but it will not change in the same proportion as the sales. Therefore, we don't have to compute what is current year's accounts payable as a percent of sales, but we assume this is 5%, so I'm going to write here the 5%. Next item is accruals. We assume this to be constant, so we don't have to compute a percent for this item. The next item is long-term debt. It also does not change in proportion with the sales. We don't have to compute its percent. And next is contribute capital. We assume this to be constant. Retained earning, uh, it, it increases by net income and it is not directly in proportion with the sales so we'll leave this as is here and after we express as percent we can compute values for next year now let's just start projecting values for next year so the cash, let's start the first item on the balance sheet, the cash. We assume to this to be constant, therefore next year's cash is going to be the same as current year, right? All right, that's 67. So in order to compute accounts receivable for ne next year, what we have to know is, we know current in current year, account receivable as a percent of sales is 10%. So in next year, we assume that the accounts receivable will be 10% of next year's sale. Therefore, 10% times next year's sale. So that gives us the accounts receivables. In order to compute inventory, again, what we do, we multiply current year percent with the next year's sales, and that gives us the inventory. What about prepaid expenses? We assume this to be constant, right? Therefore, the next year's prepaid expense is going to be the same as current year. All right, we computed now 
cash account receivable inventory and prepaid expenses and after we compute these items we can compute the total current assets which would be the sum of all these above items right so it's going to be sum of all these four items that gives us the total current assets all right which is 1035000 so next item we have is property plant and equipment and it grows by 5% which means next year's property plant and equipment will be current year's property plant and equipment times 1 plus the 5% right because it increases by 5% so it gives us next year's property plant and equipment is 473,000 so now we can compute total asset which is the total current assets plus the property plant and equipment so that gives us 1508,000 total assets for next year now let's go in project or find the next year's value for items on the liability side so the first item is current portion of long-term debt and we assume this to be constant so it's gonna be the same as current year next item is bank loan and we are going to use this bank loan as a plug and we also want to find out how much we need bank loan for next year so I'm gonna leave this a blank right now because I'm going to use Excel's goal seek function to find out how much debt or the short term loan do we need next year so the next item is accounts payable right and we assume accounts payable next year will be 5% of next year sale therefore it's going to be the 5% times the next year's sales which is 4000 so that is 200 now accruals and we assume that to be the same so it's gonna be same right here so once we compute current portion of long-term debt bank loan accounts payable accruals now we can compute total current liabilities so therefore that equals to sum of all these four items right all right that is going to be 250 what about long-term debt and long-term debt we assume that it is reduced by repayment amount right so we have here current year 100 is the long-term debt and the payment is 15 right so how much is left then the remaining of the long-term debt would be your long-term debt minus the current portion of the long-term debt so that gives us how much is left for long-term debt so once we compute long-term debt now we can compute total liabilities and that is going to be the total current liabilities plus the long-term debt so that gives us total liability which is 335 what about contributed capital and we have assumed that to be constant so it's gonna be the same as the current year right what about retained earning and as we assume that there's no dividend paid right so next year's retained earning would be what is retained earning in the current year plus the net income in the the next year's right so that's going to be 363 so that gives us the retained earning for next year and once you compute retained earning now we can compute total debt and equity which would be some of these three items or total liabilities contributed capital and 
return earning. So that gives us the total debt and equity. And now, if you pay your uh, attention here, so total debt and liability is 1178, whereas total asset is 1508. So they are not the same, right? So which means balance is, is not balance. So we need to make sure that the balance sheet is balanced. So why is not balance? Because we have not put any amount for bank loan. Now how much do we need as a bank loan next year in order to make this balance sheet balance? So in order to find out this answer, I am going to use Excel's goal seek functions. So if you click on data, there's a what if analysis tab. And if you click there, there's a goal seek function. And that goal seek will help us to find out what is the optimal level of bank loan that makes the balance sheet balance. So in order to use this function, the first cell is set cell, meaning this cell must have a function and in this case we want to make this total debt and equity equal to the value which is our total assets 1508 so this is how you said set cell means the cell that you want to set to the value and that value is going to be the total assets in this case and now what do you want to change? It gives us option to choose the cell to change and that is going to be the bank loan. So that's going to be the cell that I want to change is this guy. So once you make all these selection, so once you make this all selection again, set cell that is total debt and equity and value meaning how much you want to set this total debt and equity to which is total assets and what cell do you want to change and this is the plug that is being used which is current bank loan right once you make all that selection and you should click OK and once you click OK it gives you the number in that cell and that number makes the total debt and equity equals to total asset now balance it is balance once you find the total bank loan and debt for next year, you can go back to the pro forma income statement and compute interest expense. In order to compute interest expense, I am going to use average of current and next year's loan. Keep in mind that the interest on bank loan is 7% and long term debt is 9%. Therefore, interest expense is equals to 7% times the average of bank loan which is going to be current year's bank loan plus next year's bank loan divided by 2 plus 9% times the average of the long-term debt therefore I'm going to add current portion of the long-term debt and long-term debt in current year this guy plus this guy and plus next year's current portion of long-term debt plus next year's long-term debt divided by so that gives us total interest expense. Once you compute interest expense, it will change net income on income statement. Change in the income statement will change retained earning on the balance sheet. Therefore, you have to use goal seek functions once again to make the balance it balance let's go and use it so data 
what if analysis and goal seek and this time our our set cell is going to be our total debt and equity and the value is going to be the total asset which is 1508 and the cell that you want to change is going to be the bank loan so once you make all these selections you can click on OK and it will change the value and make the balance it balance for example total asset now is the same as the total debt and equity therefore the bank loan needed for next year is 136 thank you I hope it makes sense